Uncle Mark here, welcome to the channel. Let's get right to it. Working on my wife's 2010 Dodge Caravan. It's got uh, one of the motor mounts, it's got some cracks in the rubber. So I thought I'm just gonna change it already. The thing's got about uh, 125,000 kilometers or we'll figure out what that is in miles. And I figured that I'm gonna get it already. Let's swap it. Let's see how hard it is to do. It's only four bolts. We gotta lift the engine a little bit. I think I can do it. So a quick little history here, just take a look at these cracks on this side of this motor mount. Uh, rubber's cracking. It's not broke all the way through or nothing, but it's like, well, it's got to be not helping any. So let's get to it. Just need uh, my jack and a piece of wood, something soft, because I'm going to be jacking against the uh, bottom of the engine, which is the oil pan. And, you know, I don't want to break that. You can just imagine what that would be worth. So that's what the oil pan looks like. I'm just almost not really enough room for my jack and the piece of wood. Maybe I needed a little smaller piece of wood. Just something soft. Maybe the jack would have been okay without it, but I'm not taking a chance. It just about fits in there, so I just kind of pushed up on the bumper of the van just a little bit. And I'm not very strong, but just look at that. It went up a little bit. So we'll jack there. Just basically want the jack to support this one side of the engine so it's going to depend on how high I guess I think I need to jack it so that's what I'll do the first thing I am gonna to have to do is take the cover off the engine here just so I can get at the motor mount a little easier Give it a pop it's just stuck on like with these they're not even really clips they just fit into these little little balls that snap into these little spaces here. There's four of them. One way up there. So it's easy enough to just pop them back in later. You'll see. And then it's like, well, <clears throat> that's where those little fingers are that pop in there. And this is all plastic, so don't want to break it. Air filter box comes off next. I've got my flat screwdriver to take this hose clamp off. And uh, I had it off a while back, so it came off pretty easy. Sometimes they get a little sticky just from the heat and stuff like that. This one too. This one I had off a couple of weeks back. Did a different video. So it came off pretty easy, but I'm just going to try and push it out of the way just for filming. You could probably have it dangling there. It's... And this little, it's an air, intake air temperature sensor. Only in the 4 liter engines, I believe. So on the uh, Volkswagen Rotan. And uh, the Grand Caravan with the 4 liter engine will have this. Just gonna unplug it just so I don't break it. Don't want the wire to be too short. I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And then pop this uh, filter housing open. I think if we just pull them towards them myself, it should pop open. Yes, it did. Some fingers in the back that are just holding it in there. I just pull it towards myself. Those are the three fingers in there that go into those little holes it's kind of like a hinge pull the filter out this is a good time to see if it's dirty or not if it's really bad maybe it's time to replace it this one's it's okay i might just tap it on a piece of cardboard see if i can get it a little cleaner but now this i always thought this was a bolt down here but it's not it's just a finger that pops through this housing there's a piece of rubber there and i'll show you that and of course where the uh, air inlet is for the box there now the power steering fluid reservoir has got a hold on nut here 13 millimeter i believe so that's hooked up to that filter box i'm just going to loosen it and then i'll be able to get the box out we hope it's not held down with any real force or anything like that. It's not super tight or nothing. Don't want to lose that though. And then just move this uh, thing is what I got to do. Just so this power steering reservoir out of the way a little bit. It'd be too much work to unhook it. No real reason for me to do that either. And this should just pop out. Of course, easier said than done. It just popped into some fingers that go into some little rubber grommets. I'll show you from underneath. 
with wires and everything else. So there's one of those little grommets that a finger goes into. Another one there. And then a couple fingers here that go into some grommets in the bottom. Rubber washers, whatever you want to call that. There's the ear inlet, if that's what it's indeed called. And this wire that's hanging here was actually part of the box. Uh, it was clipped on there with a clip and it broke last time. So I'm going to make sure I tie strap that. And I'll just move it out of the way for you guys just so you can see what I'm doing here. And there's our motor mount. There's four bolts holding it in. There's actually six bolts, but only four need to come off. There's 16 millimeter, I believe, or five eighths should work. I'm just going to take them off with a little electric impact. Just be a little quicker. You can do this with normal tools. A ratchet, three eighths ratchet, I guess would work. That's what these tools are. While I'm taking this off, I should be careful that the engine, when I start loosening it, doesn't start going down too far. It's sitting on the jack, maybe. Like I know there's some pressure on there, but just have to be careful. Maybe I might have to jack the engine up just a little bit. Sorry for my hand in the way. Plus I had a light falling. It's that silver thing in the left hand top corner. And these two guys, I don't want them to come all the way out. I just want to see like how much pressure. So I'm just kind of giving them a little rip at a time. Don't want the engine dropping or something. Give it a couple more shots. be coming out. It's fairly light too, it's not bad. Just gonna brush away a little bit of the gravel in here. Put the new one in. Let's line up the holes. And the engine's sitting a little low. I'm gonna try and jack it up a little bit. I don't know if my jack lost pressure a little bit, or I didn't have it high enough, or what. Or I didn't have the handle tight enough so that it was going to hold pressure. I'm just going to kind of finger tighten these things in here, or start them, so I don't strip them. And just lightly, I'm not going to do them very, very, uh, I'm not making the torque very tight. That's the word. The jack's still kind of low, so i jack that engine up a little more on this side. It's the right mount, I just... It's too low. And it didn't fall when I took the mount off the old one. You saw that. So it's getting close. Jack it a little bit more. I wanted basically the right height so that my torque's going to be right when I torque these bolts down after. Got to thread these in there. Might have to wiggle the mount a little bit. I get my ratchet out and just tighten them down. Now these two came from the factory already torqued, so I'm not going to touch them. But we'll do these three in the back and the two in the front there, and they're all the same size. So I had to improvise with an adapter, because this is a 3 8 uh, driver set, uh, but my torque wrench is half inch. And they weren't long enough, because the torque wrench wants to bang into everything. I won't be able to turn it at all. So I got a longer extension. It's supposed to be torqued to 40 foot pounds, so I'm just gonna kind of, you know, like a person usually does wheel nuts, just tighten them a little bit, you know, and uh, before it clicks, and then uh, you know, give them a little more, a little more, until they start to get to up to that 40 foot pounds. It's not something that has to be you know, measured like crisscrossing like um, head bolts or something. It's not going to be that important. But I don't want them coming off, right? So, 40 foot-pounds. Supposedly what the book says, check 
you're going to do this job. Let me just check. The mountain came with absolutely no instructions as to, well, it didn't come with the bolts either. So maybe they just figure you'll know what the spec is. So I'm just going to make sure we got them all tightened up. It actually felt like a lot more than 40 foot pounds, although I don't do this every day. So this torque wrench starts at about 10 or 15 foot pounds, but I know like even 20 foot pounds is a little tough for it to judge. It's not that accurate low down there. I'll put our air filter box back in and that goes where this inlet is. So this is the fun part. It's probably the hardest part of the whole job, getting this thing to line up, getting it to line up with that inlet and line up all those little fingers that pop into those little rubber washer or whatever you want to call them. And right on the mount there's one finger there too. That's that one that looks like a bolt when you look inside the filter originally. And of course this one's got to line up with a hook on the uh, washer fluid bottle. And then we're going to have to set the power steering reservoir on that other bolt that sticks out. So bear with me here and I'm just going to show you this did not go in as easy as anything else. I'm trying to get it to snap in there and it's trying to line up like, I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, five, six or seven different points all at the same time. But if a person doesn't panic, it should go in. Like we know how it goes in, it's just to jiggle that box just the right angle. And this doesn't seem to be the right angle. Almost. Not really. <laughs> Maybe I need to be more aggressive with it. There we go. Wow. So it just sits in there. Like I say, uh, the washer fluid has that little thing it has to sit on, and then this power steering reservoir and then that goes on there I don't know what the spec is on this nut it's just you know tight not too tight because I don't want to break the plastic that it's in so I'll just get my ratchet tighten her down this is just about done now here's where this wire is supposed to it's supposed to clip on right here, but the clip, it broke when I took it off a while back. So I'm just using a tie strap for now. It's just holding it on, I guess, and it doesn't wiggle and break. Oh. And it's a weird kind of clip, too. I don't know how easy it is to find. So this is a penny. Fixed it. I guess I could always trim that out, just it doesn't look so obvious, but thought I'd use a yellow one so that I would notice that it's there. Put the air filter back in. It's doesn't have very many miles in it. I tried to tap out some of the big fluff out of it. And then uh, those three fingers go in the back. I remember that. Simple enough. Make sure it's sitting right before you bang it down like that. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't want to mangle anything. And this rubber piece with a little bit of force will go back on too. There's that. There's this wire. This rubber hose too. I'm trying to figure out which way it's not going to be tangled. It clicks. And then the little red thing snaps in to lock it. And then this just friction fit. And, oh yeah, I better not forget, i got to tighten the hose clamp, so we're not sucking dirt in. There I go. Let's put the engine cover back on. I should really wash this one of these days. Now this, uh, there's a cutout there for where you can add oil. It all kind of just fits in there. It makes sense once you see how it's sitting. So that's where the oil is. That's where you check the stick. So I just give it a tap and it should click in place. And I can feel that it's hanging on. Done. Everything's 
good. I'm just going to let the engine down now. And should be ready to go. That was worth doing. That didn't take very long. Well, that's going to do it for our little fix on the wife's fan. Hopefully she'll be happy. Not 100% sure. The motor mount was probably passable for a little while, but I thought, why not do it already? We'll get a video out of it. And it's done the van out 120. Two, three, four, five, 125,000 clicks probably, kilometers. So it's not going to hurt to have it done. If you liked the video, give me the thumbs up. Hopefully it was helpful for you watching it. You can subscribe down in the corner here if you haven't already. And you probably have a Grand Caravan or the uh, Volkswagen Touareg or not, Ro Rotan. Yes, Rotan. Same van. I'll put a card up right here, uh, some of the other things I've done to the van. Always adding to it, because we'll probably have the van forever. Until next time, thanks for watching. You and your family, take care. Remember to be safe. Your safety is your responsibility and should be priority number one. Also, give me the thumbs up if you liked the video. Plus, please subscribe and you'll get all the notifications. It's easy, the little dog will show you how. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. I like this clip where my light, an LED light, falls in right in the view of everybody. Thanks a lot. Try and get some good lighting in here, otherwise, you know how some people's videos are, you can't see what they are doing. But I figured you didn't need to see this falling in the video.